After a lot of requests, we reported on the Honda Transalp last year. Our summary? Great on-road performance, but a 21-inch front wheel and reasonably light weight provide good off-road credentials too. Plenty of power, delivered in a very linear fashion. It lacks some of the more advanced electronics that geeks would appreciate, but then again, it's a bargain price combined with Japanese reliability. Our Canadian cousins finally got to test the Honda Trans out for several days, so I'll hand you over to Dallas for his impressions. I'm Dallas and welcome to the Traction E-Rag. Today we are going to talk about the Honda Transalp. I gave the Transalp back to Outback Motor Tech who lent us, generously lent us that uh, motorcycle and they armored it up because you cannot give the Traction E-Rag a motorcycle without armor because we will destroy it and then be on your blacklist forever. The Honda Transalp has been a very confusing motorcycle. From the moment it was a sparkle in Honda's eye, Honda fans have been speculating aggressively about what they expect from this Transalp. Everyone seems to want the unicorn and I don't think many manufacturers are willing to produce that motorcycle. 30 years after the first Transalp, Honda announced this one. A lot of people thought it was going to be a, a baby Africa twin. If you know about the Africa Twin, it's the same concept. It's an old bike with a cult-like status that was designed for off-roading. And it was reintroduced, I think, in 2015. And it was like, people's heads exploded, especially Honda fans. And I think that that motorcycle has, has proven itself worthy of being an Africa Twin, uh, no matter what the haters say. Uh, it's, it's the, I think Honda sold over a million of of the uh, Africa Twins. So that is a, a very good production of what Honda set out to do. Honda fans hoped for a middleweight adventure bike that would compete directly with Yamaha's T7. And it raised those expectations so high with Honda fans that this bike was going to compete against the T7, which doesn't really. So we got ourselves a proper chunky uh, set of knobbies from Motaz, who we love. They sent us Motaz rally tires for this motorcycle. There was a very, very high likelihood that Honda would be able to produce a good street bike. They've been building street bikes since 1949. We tried it out. It's silky smooth. It's electric, beautiful power, decent handling. You could run through the twisties with this thing easily and fast. The internet judges these adventure bikes solely on off-road capability. It doesn't get the badge of honor unless it does very well off-road. It does better off-road than you think it's going to, I can say, assuredly. And people that are poo-pooing this, um, the keyboard warriors who have an opinion, what I find over all these years of doing this is most people haven't rode the bike Yet they have a very strong opinion about the bike. And I don't think that that's fair because motorcycle chemistry is a thing. The Transalp is in the spectrum between the T7 and a GS800. The very first thing you notice is it's got a tremendously low center of gravity. It doesn't feel top heavy and when it starts to tip, it doesn't tip nearly as as aggressively as a top heavy bike would. The engine is Honda. It is going to be reliable. That's, that's not needed to be said. It's not overwhelmingly powerful. Your eyes aren't going to water when you twist the throttle. It is quick. There's no question. The power comes on, but it's very predictable. I like this motorcycle because it is predictable and it's got a linear power curve and there's no surprises. A lot of people mention ground clearance. I think ground clearance is important when you're off-roading, but if you're going to be going into terrain where this motorcycle is uh, going past its clearance, you've probably chosen the wrong tool for the job. This is not a aggressive off-road motorcycle. No matter how badly people wanted it to be that fantasy, it's, it's not that thing. The computer. What you're looking for is you want a interface that makes sense 
it's not too complicated and you don't got to work too hard inside the interface. The Transalp has a pretty clean, understandable interface. It's not super complicated, but it, it, uh, it, has, it has all the modern choices. It's got a bunch of modes on it like every other bike. Is the Transalp deserving of all the criticism? No, it's not, because it is what it is. It's a very reliable, very predictable, very friendly Swiss Army knife that does a little bit of off-road and it does the street side, I would think, pretty damn well. Transalp is for someone who is more practical and, and leans more to the side of, of reliability, uh, predictability. None of these things are a bad thing. They're not bad. Um, if you are a human that leans in that direction, I think the Transalp is a good choice. It's hard to say something negative about the Transalp in the space that it was aimed for. Reliability, practicability, uh, easy to live with, not scary. It, it's a Labrador retriever of, in the motorcycle world. Have you ridden the Honda Transalp? Do you own one? We are very keen to hear your thoughts. Let us know in the comments. That was a good one. <laughs> Ruff, <laughs>